might be listed in the uh, classified reports. And be careful what you wish for, because we don't have a localized document straight out of Arizona yet. I wouldn't be surprised if it actually was named in one of those documents, because you got to remember, uh, we got the Virginia Fusion Center document, and then we had two nationally distributed DHS documents. But the localized Virginia one was 215 pages long and literally named almost every organization and admitted that they had been surveilled for quite some time, even though they hadn't committed any crimes or plotted any acts of violence or terrorism that they're so willing to lump in there because everything is terrorism and everybody's an extremist. And even though, you know, you're part of a leaderless resistance movement right now, Ernest, I mean, ooh, you could be a subversive. I I'm just so glad that people are waking up, they are taking action, and like you said, it is very inspiring to see people step up to the plate and have the will to actually do something. Not just talk about it, not be an armchair quarterback, take part in something that can change lives. Well, we've been doing this for, we were on their first list back in 94 when they created the FBI. I was out of Phoenix here, so they had their, you know, constitutionalists need to be watched, watched and it was the same thing, you know, and it came out of... Uh, was it the Southern Poverty, Southern Poverty Law, Law Center? Law Center. They're the ones that continue whatever. to, uh, yeah, yeah they, they continue to demonize us here at InfoWars. And, uh, of course, you know, everything we do. And Lou Dobbs is a bad person now, according to the uh, Southern Poverty Law Center. They're, they're pretty uh, disgusting people all the way around. No, well, this is, they're just a function of the machine. I mean, this is, you know, this is, once you've been doing this for a long time, and just like Alex is very sensitive to this, it's a psyop. You know, these mm -hmm. guys. I've been doing, well, I've been through this since 89. I've seen it go round and round. That's why they call it revolution. It just keeps coming around. Well, I'm telling you, we're built up to a big revolution, and they're having to make sure that anyone that they believe is in opposition to their ruling us has to be on some kind of list so that they can be rounded up, you know, if they ever get the guts to do it later. And I don't think it's really... Uh, you know, the, uh, bravery or courage on their part, it's just desperation. You know, they're going to be in a situation to where they are going to, you know, see the pitchforks and torches coming towards them, and they're, they're going to act out of desperation. But what they have to count on is they have to count on law enforcement and the military to do their bidding. And if you have a, like the Russian Revolution, where you have uh, people, uh, tank commanders just not willing to fire on the people, you know, and will that happen here in America? Well, I think I, that the reason that that, that's, that is an important point to make is because they are bringing more foreign troops in who may be willing to uh, pull the trigger. NLE 09, National Level Exercise 09, that's going to take place at the end of July into the beginning of off, uh, August, takes place with international forces, the U.K., uh, Australia, Canada, Mexico, and then FEMA Region 6, and it is based on a terrorist attack uh, occurring overseas and then FEMA's heading up this drill, by the way, and it's incorporated with DHS. And then when they come to the United States, they're going to integrate all local, state, federal, and even tribal governments into this, as well as private sectors, make makeshift FEMA centers and military bases. And I, I think that that's what this is. This is to try to get local law enforcement used to the idea of working with all these other entities and just letting them know the sovereignty is over, Constitution's over, Bill of Rights is over, we might have to quarantine people, we might have to do a domestic take. Over and I pray to God more people wake up, especially on the inside, so they don't allow that to occur. Well, here in Arizona, we were kind of prepped for this. You know, uh, you got to keep in mind that Jack McLam, which was a Phoenix police officer here, had the Aid and Abet newsletter, which was police and military against the New World Order back in the eighties. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, started in the early nineties, I became aware of him, and I've interviewed him on my radio show in a four-part series that. You know, just it went from the beginning to end, and he was very specific about that. You know, Vampire Killer 2000, the book that they had created, and all this information was sooner or later, local law enforcement is going to be the tip of the spear for this new world order. And he's like warning them. He's saying, "Look, you know, take your oath seriously. Here it comes. Don't get caught in this." Then, in the mid 90s. Um, they had the multi-jurisdictional task force thing that they kept amping up. That mm -hmm. came in with Clinton and Sheriff Joe Arpaio gets all kinds of press, and he's a hardcore, toughest sheriff kind of. He was DEA for you know, a decade and a half. This guy is part of it. He's just walking it right in. So 
this was made in fact that uh, pamphlet that we found out about they were doing like their watch lists are doing now came from a uh, deputy at the sheriff's department that sent it to us. We were the ones that broke that back when we had a workshop back in the mid nineties. You know, we've been libertarian activists for a long time. So this is just nothing new to us. We've been going through this. You know, we have Napolitano's now head of the Homeland Defense Gestapo. She was our governor here. And before that, she was U.S. attorney. You know, and she was attorney general. And she was criminal defense attorney for uh, uh lawmaker that was caught taking a bribe on videotape. Well, there's no doubt that Napolitano is... Her co-chief of staff. Yeah, there's no doubt that Napolitano is bought, uh, you know, bought and paid for and part of this elite establishment and really a minion for them or she wouldn't be where she is. I mean, she's the successor to Michael Chertoff, who is just an outward demon. We'll be back. Final segment with Ernest Hancock. We are Change Arizona. FreedomPhoenix.com.